Is there any truth to Lawrence Gardner's research on the bloodlines of the Holy Grail? Yes. In his works, Genesis of the Grail Kings, Bloodline of the Holy Grail, and Realm of the Ring Lords, Lawrence Gardner, 1943 until 2010, presents the direct lineages as family trees for every generation, tracing back from at least the lifetime of Jacques de Molay, 1240 to 1314 AD, to at least that of Nebuchadnezzar II, who ruled in Babylon from 605 until 562 BC. These documents appear to substantiate several fringe and speculative claims made, for example, in Fritz Sprigmeier's Bloodlines of the Illuminati, about modern rich elite families all being interrelated, and claims made, for example, in Jim Marr's book, rule by secrecy about the descent of all the modern ruling elites from an original babylonian brotherhood that dated back at least as far as ancient sumer and the levant in gardner's records which also tie in with the controversial translations of zacharias sitchin the original civilizers of humankind were extraterrestrials who not only created our species in a test tube but later also bred with us to spawn a subspecies of hybrid giants. These extraterrestrials became the pantheons of gods in all ancient cultures, according to this tradition. He finds that Yahweh and Allah are merely modern derivations of names for the Sumerian twin gods Enlil and Enki, respectively. Wherever Gardner got these, family tree documents they remain of major usefulness to anyone who wants to study this line of thinking in the modern genre of conspiracy theories they relate that jesus had children who became the merovingian kings of france a popular claim among the modern descendants of these deposed monarchs and that jesus survived the crucifixion by having been anointed in a chrism that contained monoatomic gold, allowing Jesus to leave his body and return to it any time he wished, a claim that popularizes the fringe science of ingesting superconductive monoatomic platinum group elements by giving it a long historical context and precedent. Again, according to Gardner's research, presented in his work, Lost Secrets of the Sacred Ark, the role of such monoatomic gold was pivotal in the ultimate fate of the Ark, of the Covenant artifact itself. Of course, because many of his claims are based on argument by way of absence. Of course, because many of his claims are based on argument by way of absence of evidence rather than its presence. Many of his claims remain considered pseudoscience even though eventually they will all likely be proven true.